Hey everybody, this is Asher with another Essential Topics in Final Fantasy. I promised we'd be doing some walkthrough runs. This is the first of one of those, which is why you can see this is listed as an advanced topic in Final Fantasy. Today we're going to do some Chaos Rush, which you can see from my timer split here, something that I've run quite a bit. And there is currently a Chaos Rush tournament that's going on, so if you watch that, it's on Random Mania. And you're interest, interested in the format, this is the video for you, kind of to walk through, let you pick my brain, sort of see my thought process. So this is not gonna be me playing going, go, go, go. There's gonna be a lot of stopping and me talking about my decision making. I really wanna walk through this because this is a very different format than you might be used to if you watch the regular randomizer. And it requires some different skills and everything. However, this video assumes that you have an, a solid understanding of some of the core mechanics of the randomizer and Final Fantasy 1 in general, so we're going to stick mainly to talking about strategy via Chaos Rush. So if you're new to the format or you want to know kind of my thoughts on it, this is this is kind of the place to go. So Chaos Rush, to put it in a nutshell, as let's just go ahead and start making characters here. Let's do a different background color though by pressing select. I like the teal. So this is going to be a lovely seed to show you, but I think maybe a pretty good example of what Chaos Rush can look like. You have three forced characters. One is going to be melee, one is going to be a caster, and then one's going to be a grab bag here. So we have a party of thief, red mage, white mage. And what you do is that you have access to the airship immediately. You have access to Temple of Fiends, and it's short Temple of Fiends. So if you wanted to, you could try to walk straight in. The game assumes all four orbs are lit, and you just can go and punch out the final boss. It's not necessarily chaos. All the final bosses are on which means there are four possibilities for bosses, but if you see me here, I cannot actually switch my party. So, of course, I was hoping to maybe show you a little bit more of a standard run, but you know what? A Thief Seed presents its own interesting challenges. So we'll do a Thief Seed. That's fine. I'm not going to remake, reroll. As you can tell, this is a randomly rolled seed. I have no idea what's going to happen. For all I know, this is going to be a disaster, and you can laugh along with me. So I don't have great names for these people, so we'll just call you dead. Even though I'm not a fan of killing off characters in um, this format, especially when it's your only reliable melee person. So Red Mage, we'll just call you Hat. I try to have my party names have different first letters so I can understand them pretty well, and we'll just call you Robe. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm glad I chose the B instead of the E, and we're gonna keep our blank character blank. So, three forced classes, one forced blank. When we're looking at this party from the very start, I know I'm gonna want the tail, because that unlocks the thief going to the ninja, and we're gonna prioritize looking for uh, level one through four black magic. Not just because of the red mage, which we would anyway, but we really want the thief to be able to do something or we want the ninja to be able to have the opportunity to cast. And we're also gonna check weapon shops for possible katanas or vorpals because on Chaos Rush, elite items can appear in the store. One of the potential key items, as you can see from the tracker, is the Mazamian. But we'll get to where some of those key things are. I'm gonna do some things differently in this run that I might otherwise do, such as pausing, such as keeping up with my tracker to let you know where I'm at here. I normally do not do those things. I'm going to be doing a lot of pausing, but you can see right away, you have a lot of information here on your screen. You can plan ahead, and there's four big phases to Chaos Rush. The first thing you want to do is get key items, because as every key item you get is an additional 20% experience. That's a big bonus. The next is finding a good grind. Trap tiles are shuffled, and world encounters are shuffled and randomized, which means you can get almost a whole different world of grinds possibly somewhere or you might be able to find something on the overworld depending on the combat table which i've talked about in previous videos then we have the gear check which is going to be very important for our ninja a little less important for our two casters and then finally getting the boss hopefully how long is this run going to take i don't know sometimes the thief seed can go 20 minutes sometimes the thief seed can go 50 minutes but like i said we're going to walk talk and see where we go and for some reason my phone is giving me a notification i am doing this in one take because it's a live stream that's going to be put on youtube later so cool uh asher games is the youtube i'm going to be putting all these videos up. there's a chaos rush uh tournament round of eight match tonight at eight o'clock on random media so if you can catch that it's great if you're watching this in the future 
well, look for VODs and stuff, and there may be more Chaos Rush action coming, but enough uh, further ado, introductions, things like that. We have a game plan in mind already, but first thing is first, let's go three, two, one, start. So the first thing we do is walk into town, and I'm going to skip the weapon shop for now. I want to see what spells are here, so immediately pause. And we have Cure 4 available. It's in a Red Mage and White Mage learnable slot, but it's a little bit expensive. We have Harm 2 that's available. We'll always buy that over Harm. Harm 2 is only learnable by the White Mage. It's completely blocked out for the Red Mage. But we may still want to buy both of those. We only have 400 gold to work with, so I'm going to check and see what's in Black Magic first. So Black Magic. Let's go ahead and select Hat here. So this is an excellent spell selection. We have Lit 3, Fast, and Warp. Now the unfortunate thing is that I would love to get Cure 4, but unfortunately Lit 3, Fast, and Warp are all amazing spells. I could try and cheat a little bit and say, you know what, let's get Fast on our uh, Ninja, but that's banking on getting the Ninja. If we have a Thief and we want to be swinging, we're going to go like that. So this is one of the first places where other, your opponents are going to possibly make some different decisions that you make. But Cure 4 is a strong enough spell that having Warp is sometimes going to make your run really interesting, but it's 72 gold. It could possibly break your run. Fast can be necessary on some bosses. Lit 3 is a very good clearing spell for the early game. So I'm going to skip Warp, as bad as that feels. And I'm going to get Lit 3, Fast, and Cure 4 on my Red Mage. And Cure 4 and Harm 2 on my uh, white mage. So let's go ahead and restart the timer, make the purchases. And this would be a tough decision for me that I'd have to make at the drop of a hat, and I'd probably choose poorly. If I was playing this straight up, I probably, to be honest, would have just bought all the black magic and then been like, wow, I really wish I had cure four on both people. But warp is a very good spell for getting in and out of places, but you don't always need it. So I'm looking at these now. Black Shirt is a good caster item that makes the Thief useful, and the reason I'm checking this right now is that I want to know what armor is available later. Like Ice Shield, I would normally be writing this down, but I'm not right now. Ice Shield, Ninja Gear, you want that. That's really the only thing that we're interested in. Black Shirt, we don't need it. If I didn't have Lit 3 or a way to wave clear, then we would be looking for it. But right now, I don't need too much of the armor. The next thing we're going to do is check the Weapon Shop. And in the Weapon Shop, Power Staff Dragon Sword is not good enough for the uh, ninja can use it, black, or Thief cannot. Uh, so yeah, these weapons don't really do anything for us. You get a little bit of information if I run into a treasure chest with a heal staff. Now one thing by foregoing warp is that I cannot necessarily dive into uh, the chest in the short Temple of Fiends right away, but there's enough other treasure chests around. This part's a little bit disappointing though. I cannot use a cabin before Garland, which is where I'm gonna be going here in just a second. I'll talk about why momentarily, but I would normally love to buy 10 save items. Sometimes cabins and sometimes tents roll cheap enough to buy 10, but not today. So let's keep walking. I wanna be out of town in about a minute and we're right around that time. So here's our airship. We have two potential options here. Let's, that's not the map button. We have two potential options here. Uh, pulling up the in-game map is fine. We are here. For Chaos Rush, a few different items are incentivized. One it comes from the King and Sarah that goes by killing Garland, which is right at the top at the top of place here. I'm not entirely sure if my mouse pointer is going to show up while I'm doing this. So, so much for the talk through. But Marsh First is the correct play according to Spell Zap. That's fine. Uh, Spell Zap is better at this game than I am. But we have the potential for going to Garland, or we have the potential for going to Provoker for Pirates. For routing purposes, I like doing Garland first, and then we can swing around and do Pirates second or Pirates last, but it depends on a lot of different factors. So map is B select in case you didn't know, but regardless, we're visiting Garland first. This is a very important walk because it teaches us if the encounter table is possible good early encounters. We have a pretty early encounter maybe not early enough so we're not checking any of the chests which i absolutely would do in a swiss run here wait command is a very nice cheeky time save because it it's just those little bit of time saves that can add up over time very thin garland as well so just one lit three that's enough to do it typically 
your three spell your three spells nuke or fade is going to be fast enough look out for quad x rub brack or break as well but let's see we have the ship available from the king i do not usually run the tracker on this but we're doing it today so just to pause real quick i have the ship i have the canoe uh is it even good to go to matoya for chest first is a question from spells app it's something i do but i'm starting to figure out that i don't always do it sometimes it's the only chest that i do in a run the reason i like going to matoya first is to get some potential lunch money but the argument that i've seen other players make is that you don't want to check matoya because you might do go through there for crown and it's a double dip or you can just get the money you need from pirates to shop in Provoca, which is true. Sometimes Matoya pans out, sometimes it doesn't, but it's one of the easiest chest checks you can do. Uh, let's go back to starting the timer again after this, because I accidentally let it run a little bit while I was talking. So we're going to walk out of here, and let me see here. We could do the Matoya chest check, which is what I might be doing next, but yeah, let's go ahead and do that. That's kind of that's the standard way I play. Sometimes you want to go kind of opposite around the world, but let's see Spell Zap if Matoya pans out today. Spell Zap, a player who started shortly after me but is very good at this game. Thorhammer. Thorhammer is an excellent find. We put it on the Thief, so the Thief has something to do. You want your caster items on your Thief because we're going to be looking for Tail, but there's no guarantee that we get Tail. None at all. So, next, the lovely town of Provoca, which has pirates, and we have 4,000 gold. So we are good for shopping first. All right, white magic. In white magic, we have fog two, which typically you don't have enough time to use. Ruse, which is not great. Heal, which is probably the only spell I'll buy just for some basic tiny healing. But this is not a good spell list. Let me make sure I'm using the correct person for this. All right, so those spells are probably all skippable. Fog two, maybe some niche situations. And meanwhile, we have Slow 2, Lock, and Brack. Brack would be good if we were facing the original Fiends in their Temple of Fiends, but Chaos Rush has the Temple of Fiends revisited bosses, so Brack is not nearly as effective. You may be surprised by this, but Zap, you'll be proud spell Zap, is probably the only spell here we'd want to use of anything because it's a sweeper and it has a possibility of killing the phantoms in the Lich and Friends or the Undead Party Pack. Uh, it's a low chance, but it's still a chance. So there's that. And we're going to check the weapon shot because we're still looking for that katana or vorpal. And we have a vorpal. And vorpal's pretty cheap. I'm not going to buy it yet. There's a defense sword there as well. So those are two very good options. Defense cast ruse on your person. And if we're just going to have a thief up there, at least he can be a meat shield. I went to the end to save because I've seen people wipe at pirates. It happened in my group of eight race. But see, now we have the Thor Hammer, we have Lit 3, and you have nothing, so we just wait. So these pirates go first. I am a fan of safety saves. Not everybody is a fan of safety saves, but we get the Lit 3 off. I could probably rearrange my party to put Hat in the lower slots, um, but I'm not going to do it right now. So you can see here, you're not supposed to get level 7 that fast in this flag set, but we get the Crown. Crown is very important. It opens up some routing possibilities. I'll walk and talk while we do this. We're going to be checking item shops for the rod, which is actually right here. And I'm going to buy the rod right now because I have the money to do it. The rod, which is a shop item, is going to add 20% more experience. You can see up here I'm getting 20% for every key item. We have airship, ship, crown, rod, canoe. Loot and bridge also count there. So there's one rod. We want to buy tents. We don't have any heals for sale here, but we're going to buy 20 tents. That's probably more than we need. I'd like to buy a house, but I'm not going to do it yet. And then we have cap and silver armor. Silver armor is good for the red mage because the red mage can wear it, but it's not good enough to buy in chaos rush because we're looking for gold bracelets or opal bracelets for our casters and possibly for our ninja as well. You see where we're going next? We have the airship. We can go anywhere we want to. We know we have the crown, so we don't need to check Elfland yet. We don't really need to check this item shop. I'm doing it because I want heals. Heals are kind of expensive, which is gross. But we're looking for bracelets and ribbons now. So there's opal bracelets. They're 33,000, which is expensive, but not unreasonable. Um, okay. 
Level 6 Black Magic or White Magic with Life Tune and Viz is really good. I'm kind of debating buying Life Tune now, but I'm not going to. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong spells that, but those are Red Wizard learnable should we promote. It's the level 6 magic where you get slots uh, 2, 3, and 4. I should know that, but I should always get it. Yeah, silvers are cheap enough to buy for the grind. I typically skip them, though. And there's our Mazimune. Mazimune, very important because it means that we don't need to check weapon shops anymore. And in fact, we can give this Thor hammer to the White Mage now because we don't know where Fade is yet. So Dead is going to be swinging. This means we drop Hat into the back row here. So Dead, Robe, and Hat. Everybody has their role. Everybody's going to be doing damage now. Ninja with the Mazmune is great. I'd honestly, with this comp with the spell list so far, would probably not pass my Mazmune on to somebody else. If I get Desperate on the ground, yeah, Red Wizard first slot black and everything else first slot white at six. So I had it right, great. Um, the Black Magic was good. I'm a little sad that Ice 3 is at the bottom, but we're just not going to get it. So the other thing we want is the tail, and there's the tail. Cool. So this is where a route divergence is going to happen that maybe you might not see in other things. This is one that I watched from Leggy Starscream. Now, what she likes to do and what she is exceptional at is not doing double checks of towns. In fact, she would have gone here first, gotten the tail first, and wouldn't need the double dive Provoca, which is what I'm going to have to do. So that's a bit of a time loss for me. Also, it's a little bit of a time loss because I elected to not buy warp. Getting out of Bahamut's cave, you're going to see I'm going to have to do a lot of walking that if I had bought warp, I wouldn't have to do. But while we're here, and because I have a ninja, and I did this wrong, by the way, um, I am going to check these chests. We're going to full clear Cardia. This is, this is technically a gamble. We may not need all this gear. Nuke may be level 3. There's chain armor, which is good enough for hat for now. One of the reasons I didn't opt for... Uh, silvers and stuff though was because i knew if i was getting tail i might be able to just go ahead and do this we're going to go ahead and promote and you're going to see this long walk cost i'm not watching the timer but i start at 536 if i could warp out of here i could save like 18 seconds 19 seconds um yeah so I'm, I am spending time by not getting warp, but now we have our weapons okay. We don't have any armor to speak of, but we're going to get additional spell charges. Lit 3 is good enough to promote for the ninja. We can put warp on the ninja too, which can be good, but yeah, it feels a little bad getting this time loss, but we got the tail. That's the more important thing. And you don't always end up promoting in Chaos Rush. I mean, sometimes you don't find the tail. Oh, one reason I saved there. Let me just stop that for a second. I always safety save because I didn't know where my next encounter was. I have not power cycled yet. But I ran into Sarius. This is a really interesting question. Do I run from this fight or do I take this fight? It's not part of a grind, but Sarius are very good experience and generally very squishy. I just saved. This is safe. This is a safe fight to take. So we're going to Thor Hammer, Swing, Lit 3, just like I talked about. Spells up correct with the Take the Cookies. This is... Uh, I'm no Minochi, but I've eaten my fair share of cookies as well, so the Saris are kind of beefy, but not terrible. Let's zap them. They're not resistant to anything, so let's see if zap does it. It's ineffective. Sorry. Um, so good. That's free experience. You're going to see we're 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ninja gets, starts getting spell charges at level 15, so that's an important level to promote before. And that's where, fortunately, I had I didn't have to dive marsh. Okay, a little bit of tech that I didn't do last time I'm going to do here. Save in the air. The reason you save in the air is if I get an encounter here, that's two eyes. They have rub, which is awful, but let's reset. I probably could have taken that. And we know there's overworld eyes, but I, I don't feel like I have the time to run around and mess with that too much. And that might have been a mistake because my bigger goal is to see what these chests are. They're not good enough. So when I reset, we fly out here, just go to the next place. And if these chests aren't good enough, we reset again and keep flying. There's an argument to be made that I should have kept my um, gear, or kept the experience from the two potential eyes there, but they have a spell list. I don't know what's coming next. If one of my characters dies, especially my ninja, which needs the levels the most, I'm just gonna reset out. And there's a ribbon. And Cardia, so we have been rewarded 
severely. So we will go ahead and pass the items accordingly. I have not seen a shop ribbon yet, but I have not been to Elfland and I have not been to Melmond and I so stupidly did not save. So we'll let three, hopefully these guys, oh, we ran. Okay, next on the list is, I could check Gaia here, but I'm not going to because I don't have the money. We're just gonna go turn in the crown. Remember that crown I picked up before? That crown chain is gonna give us quite a bit of stuff. I'm not gonna save here, so hopefully we don't get nuked by Astos. Astos is gonna give us the crystal. I'll do that on the tracker in just a second. Okay, where's our crystal? Interesting. I haven't used this tracker so long, so it's like, there's the crown. Oh, because it's always backwards. Well, that's weird. Huh. Anyway, we'll get, to, we'll get to that in just a little bit. I'm not sure at all. Maybe you can help me out why... This isn't potentially lighting up. I guess it's technically some other order thing. But regardless, that's a key item. This is what happens. I don't track during running this, so I don't know how to use a tracker anymore. That's rich. But regardless, you'll notice our two incentivized locations that are not just NPCs are Marsh Cave and Carnaria Locked. I don't anticipate diving Marsh Cave. Hey, Greg, how are you doing today? Yeah, I don't know, like, uh, Crown, I was fully... Oh, I already checked Matoya. We've been over that. So here's the Herb, which is also not changing, which means it's not going to change to the key. That's really weird, because I was hoping to be able to show this on the tracker and show how much bonus experience I'd be getting. Because doing the full Crown chain can result in somewhere between 80 to 100. It just depends. So I did end up double-dipping Matoya, which takes a little bit of time. I didn't really get anything significant enough to change the game or anything for buying stuff. Although I did have rod money, so that's pretty good. Uh, Greg trying to give some good advice that Marsh Cave is the best cave. And yeah, I've had I've lost races because I didn't dive Marsh and other people did. Typically in this flag set, I will dive Marsh if I need tail and I don't get it. Sometimes I will dive it if I feel like I need Massa and I haven't gotten it. And there is a loose slab, so that's even better. Let me do the tracker thing for that. We are not going to do the slab chain. We are not going to do any of those long chains that involve running around the world. We did turn in the tail. So loose slab is very exciting. We are not going to do the robot. I'd probably, for some cases, check the robot before. But see, now I'm doing the leggy thing, and I'm going in and checking these later. So we have level 3 nuke. What's nice about level 3 nuke is that we have a ninja that can cast it too. There are no other spells I need from this which means we can go up. You'll notice I didn't get my level one spells yet for the ninja. I'm going to do that because in my mind, I'm already planning on going to Cardia. So exit, we want harm four. Harm four is very important if we get the undead pack. We have exit, which means now we can get away from other people. Lamp is the best spell in the game, but it's too good for us to use. It feels like cheating. No, that's a incorrect information. We're not gonna buy lamp ever. And then fear doesn't really work very well. Now for this armor, this is an interesting predicament. Flame armor is really good for the ninja. It's one of the best armors the ninja can use, but I'm not spending that much money for it when I have so many other things to buy. A pro cape, on the other hand, is super cheap. I am, in fact, going to buy, and this is atypical of me, I'm going to buy two pro capes. We know we have opals available for 30,000 and uh, provoca, I believe. But our casters have armor. I might actually want to move the pro ring over. I still haven't seen ribbons. Ribbons might be in Gaia, or ribbons might not exist. I will buy two houses because I have new charges I want to refresh. Now, you may be looking over at the bottom left and saying, wow, you're going over your split right now, Asher. And you'd be right. I'm not too concerned about the key item split for two reasons. Three reasons. One is that I'm doing a guide. Two is because um, I turned in the tail, which always sort of breaks the routing a little bit. And three, I don't remember the third reason. Still, heal three, heal two. You always want heal three. Not going to buy soft. Might even buy heal three for the red wizard. Um, black magic. Lit two, fire two. I'm going to buy fire two because in a pinch, if I really need the extra charges, I'll get it from the ninja. Red wizard has enough to cast. I'd rather just have him use heal three. So Greg in chat pointing out that um, opal armor is much better than ice or fire armor due to the evade. That's true. Typically, the evade's going to do a lot better for you than the elemental resistance. 
So I should probably adjust how I play, which is the important thing. Oh yeah, and spells up pointing out I still haven't been to Melmond. We will check Melmond and Gaia. Um, right now I haven't found Temper, but I have found Fast. Sun Sword, don't really need that. I have a lot of the items I need, but I'm still hoping for some gold. There's a bottle. Sometimes you can work in the bottle turn in, and since I'm going to Gaia, I could try, but I have enough key items. I don't really need to worry about it, so... This is really weird, because typically I should have the key here and be able to unlock these other things, but something is missing, and it's not the floater. It's not in any of these other stuff. Is it the TNT? This sometimes breaks it. No? Huh. Weird. All right, well, this is what we have for the most part. And we can finish our split. Yay, two minutes over. But that's okay. I'm trying to route efficiently. We didn't have too much in the way of armor here. Um, Ice Shield is going to be good for our ninja, though, so we buy it. Not going to buy any gauntlets for now. And then we have Lit 3, Fast, and now we have a Warp and an Exit Caster, which you don't always get in these flags. And if I remember right, level 2 magic was a little uninspired. But I'm not going to do it now. I'm sorry, I'm trying to make a guide and it's not working very well because I forgot to do the most important thing, which is to save. And you know what? I can check my magic here. Yeah, level 2 black magic. Zap is good, but since I have nuke, I don't need to buy it for the ninja. So we're here again. Let's pop open the map. You can take a drink if you want to. All right, so you can't see my mouse pointer here, unfortunately, but we have trap tiles in the Temple of Fiends. We have trap tiles in Northwest Castle that are uh, key locked. We have the key, despite what this tracker says. We still have Melman to check. There's Earth Cave with three tiles and then two encounter zones right outside. There's Volcano as well. Marsh Cave if none of those work. So my order of operations is to go check Temple of Fiends first. I don't always do this. Sometimes I gamble and do some different things, but if I'm doing a typical routing of this, I'm gonna check Temple of Fiends first. I don't even care about the chest. Garden Sentry is a really good trap tile, especially if you wanna do a solo grind. Sentries have heat, which is kind of exciting, especially if you like stuff. Okay, you can see the mouse pointer. Can you see it over the NES stuff is I guess my question. I know you can see it over the tracker and over the timer that I didn't restart, so. Now here's the other thing, is that I got 6,000 experience from that. Since I have Maz immune, I wanna put my, I believe, and uh, chat will correct me on this if I'm wrong. Since I have Maz immune, I really want to have a level 25 on my ninja, and that's all I really need for the extra hit. So we're gonna tent here, we're gonna go in real quick. And this may be a seed where all I gotta do is the guard sentry. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a chance Earth is going to be better. There's a chance Volcano is going to be better. But we're going to check here because I have the key. Now, the way it shakes out in races is that a lot of people are going to check the same things. Air is really good if I had nuke charges. So let's see how this does. Air's a cremate, not so good. Now, Greg asking in chat that I'm not going to 40. That's correct. These airs might be a little too strong, which means I might be taking a time loss here, yeah. But that's okay, we safety saved outside. But right now, Guard Sentry looks like it might be it. They're reasonably killable. I'm already at level 17, so once I house, I can do this. Our other trap tiles are Arachnid, so that's useless. Let's check Melman, and then just because I'm doing a video here, I will check the Earth tiles, just so you can see the difference, because there's something I want to show you that I didn't realize at all until I started running Chaos Rush. Level five magic, cure three is good enough. Wall is good enough because we don't have ribbons yet. Okay, black magic. I don't even know why I'm checking black magic except I do, I haven't seen temper and I want temper. Skipping the weapon shop, armor shop. We have Aegis shield, copper bracelet, white shirt, ice armor. That's why I held off on the fire armor because right now gold could potentially be scarce. I'm gonna put ice armor on the ninja, probably buy opal bracelets for my two casters because I have not seen gold bracelets yet. We have not seen ribbons, so I'm absolutely gonna be checking Gaia at some point. That's not a play everyone would make in this flag set, especially with having one ribbon, but it is a play that has won me races before. 
So it would help if I equip my armor. So there's our Melmanchet. Yeah, white shirt, not just white shirt, Greg, but white shirt that is cheap. Thousand gold white shirt is probably something I should have bought just for the white mage. In fact, I will do that if this doesn't pan out. So guard sentry is good enough. Can we do better? Earths are okay. In fact, I'm going to try and nuke him down. This might be a bad move. Because Earths can roll stupidly high HP. They did not today. And you'll see here, we got about 6,000 some from the uh, other stuff. And right now we're getting uh, level 18, level 19. We're already almost leveled up enough to do something here. And Grimps, this is not good. <laughs> All right, so let's exit. I do want to keep those levels. Let's tent, not house. And you notice I checked multiple tiles there. There's a whole set of trap tiles behind those first two tiles in Earth Cave. That's something that a lot of people forget. So sea snakes are not good enough. Since we're doing a guide, I will check Volcano. I would typically not do this in a rut. Typically, I would just go to the guards. But just to show you all where the trap tiles are here. Plus, it lets me go ahead and buy Life 2, which is a very important spell to get since I saw it. This is a little scary because I didn't save outside a volcano. Plus it help, helps with a guy I check. So let's see, nachos, we'll, we'll kill the nacho. Nachos are good experience, terrible gold though. And apparently they can paralyze a ninja, so that's fun. Uh, nachos with zap. Did I say this was scary before? Look where we saved, all right. This is why safety save, by the way. My play style, I will lag whole seconds behind people because I save everywhere. That's why I buy so many tents. But see, suddenly a wipe there for something like a surprise zap from a nacho. And suddenly you're back whole seconds because you didn't save and someone else did. So that's my play style. There are also Agma tiles and stuff that I can try and do here. But okay, Gersharks, this is another fight where we ask ourselves, is this a good fight to take? The answer is absolutely. Gersharks give great experience. So we are going to do it. We have the Thor hammer, so that's even more better. We're going to do lit three because that's going to be roughly as good as nuke here. In fact, I could have lit threed with the ninja. Okay, well, correction, not roughly as good as nuke, but the Gersharks are weak anyway. Let's cure four just for fun. I almost did uh, use nothing here. Gershark, fortunately, not killing dead. So if you can get some fights in context, it's fine, but don't necessarily get baited into taking on like fights that you have to walk away, walk around and uh, constantly reset for, because sometimes you'll find a better grind. Now, Greg Lee Puff, who is in chat, did win a race in qualifying. And so let me stop for a second and say, Agamas, this is one of the best grind tiles in the game. And if I had stuck with Guard Sentry, I would be falling behind somebody who found this. I'm already behind somebody who checked Volcano first. But Greg had a really good play in the prelims where he went and he checked, um, or he happened to find an eye that was on an accessible tile on this floor of the armory, and he ended up exiting out and just resetting and fighting those eyes, and that was enough to overcome. These are really beefy agamas, though. We're gonna do it, because we're close to our target level. But checking, checking Volcano, the math for that is a little fuzzy, because I only need level 24, 25. I'm gonna take one more agama fight. Dragon armor is good to sell. Opal shield is good to sell. Um, we only need one more fight here, but what it boils down to is that, uh, how do I put it? The math shakes out where if I had just stayed with that guard sentry, I would already make up for the experience I would get fighting those Agamas. There's there's whole calculations you could do for that, but I suck at math anyway, so we're not going to do that. However, we are at our level here. I said I wanted to get level 25 before I did my first dive, and we did, so that's the split for the grind. We got a second ribbon, which is amazing. That means I do not need to check Gaia now. Two ribbons is good enough. Let's put a ribbon on our Massa user. And just for inventory management, I like putting my cell on my null character. It's technically a black mage. Of course, fun fact, it's really Bicky if you let him run around in the front of your party. And believe it or not, sometimes Bicky strats are very good strats for um, 
determining damage and stuff. Now the one downside to what I'm doing right here is that there is a white shirt in Melman that would be really good armor for the white mage, especially since we never found Fade. Please tell me it was here and not Provoka. Okay, it's here. So we have two opal bracelets. I'm doing this now because I'm absolutely not buying, um, what was, what was the spell or what was, I'm not going to buy ribbons though. I have two ribbons, which is enough. I want to get my life spells. Life is a very good save here. In fact, I can get Invis 2 on both of my people as well. Uh, I can almost get Invis 2 on both of my people. Probably should have put that on the white mage instead. We save. All right, look at my gear here. Armor, ribbon, ice, ice, opal, ice, opal, ice. Our gear check is done. It's time to fight the boss. Yeah, Greg, I agree that guard sentry can be a, a tough battle to win quickly. From the fight that I did, it seemed like they went down to a nuke and a swing. So I could have won around to them each time. So those agamas, on the other hand, were beefy, but... It shakes out pretty similar. The important thing is you don't want to get stuck on a grind when there might be a better grind, but Guard Sentry is good enough. Agama is straight up good. So, you know what? Let's talk about what I'm doing here real quick. First off, once again, Chaos Rush, you start with all four orbs lit. You can talk to this orb at any time. The bats will even talk to you if you want to. And you can go down here. There are a bunch of chests you can check. I'm going to check them this time just to see. And then you have four Fiend Trap Tiles. Two on one side, two on the other. So you can see I found Tiamat on the right. We do not want to fight Tiamat if we can avoid it, just like we don't want to fight Kraken if we can avoid it. So we're going to go to the left because we know the right doesn't work very well. So to the left, we have Lich and uh, Beyonce's box that you got to put stuff into. Now, we don't have any good spells here except for Harm 4. So that's really good. Now this lich could be super squishy. This lich could be one of the final bosses. We don't know. And according to the developers, the alternate final boss is strictly a die roll. So we really don't know. I could fast the ninja. That might have been a better play here. But we'll see what we'll see what happens. Right now I'm pretty happy with my armor. We do not rely on these for levels. Although I could technically grind them. So carry. So this is what we call a soft Topher because we can get through the first two fiends and skip uh, Kraken and Tiamat. Now, what does that turn into at the end of the day? It could be an awful final boss. I don't know. So what do we do with you? Probably not too much right now. You can't harm four. You can Thor hammer, which is fine. Let's try the fast. <coughs> oh, sorry. Fortunately, Carrie's not hitting too hard. Great. Carrie also had weak HP. So 26. Someone might have dived earlier and could have won this. Someone find a better grind tile and might have won this. But we're at 22 minutes in Temple of Fiends Revisited on the Thief Seat. I will take that every day of the week. So let's talk about this moment real quick. The moment of truth, the moment of justice, the moment of uh, punishment. This is Garland, but we're not fighting Chaos necessarily. Alt Final Boss has uh, four potential bosses as of this date of development. Although I've proposed a seafood hidden a whack a kraken, which is all of the different sea shrine enemies with a kraken hidden among them. Uh, that, that hasn't happened yet. That feels especially cruel. But the four Alt Final Bosses, just to put it very simply, is Double Dragons, which is Carry 2 and Tiamat 2. Then there is... Whack a Garland or Garland and Friends or Whack a Chaos or any of those names where it is nine Garland sprites. One of them is Chaos. You have to clear the Garlands, kill the Chaos. Then there is the Undead Party Pack, which is two Liches and four Phantoms. Phantoms hit notoriously hard. Liches can be very new cappy. And then you have War Mech and Friends, which is two War Mechs and six Evil Men. So if you like War Mech, let's make a double that is randomly determined a one out of four chance every time. We do not know what this is yet. Sometimes you'll dive Temple of Fiends and you will want to just get to the final boss to see what it is because it can determine your strategy. If this goes well, great. We're going to finish in about 24 minutes. If it doesn't, we hop back out. We grind more. We know where white shirts are. We haven't been to Gaia, so that could potentially work. In fact, before I do this, we have our ribbon on everybody but our life caster. That's fine. We want our me melee swinger to have a ribbon. We want Hat, our mage, with Nuke to cast, uh, have a ribbon. We don't have Fade on the white mage. So the ribbons may not even matter. We don't know. But let's go ahead and start the timer back up. And here we go. 
it is our buddies. So the strategy for Lich Phantom is first off, you don't want to get smacked around by the Phantoms. We know the Liches have very low HP, but pretty much what we're going to do here, I like the first time I dive this, especially if it's a fairly early dive like this, to go all out offense. And this is why we bought Harm 4, because Harm hurts Lich and Phantoms. They're both undead. So the eyes are liches, the little tiny dudes are phantoms. They're different sprites, but they're the same thing. So we're going to harm four, nuke, harm four. We're not going to cast zap, even though that can instant kill the phantoms at a low percentage chance. Liches with inferno, which is not my favorite. Phantoms are going to get hit hard. Liches with lit too, that's a little better. Dead did not get off. Oh, did dead get off his nuke? I don't know. So there's round one. So these phantoms are... Uh, coming out to play harm four. this could be enough okay the phantoms are a little beefy but we know where they're at let's reset i'm gonna give it one more go and if it doesn't work then we go back to agamatile we grind it out a little bit more but this what it boils down to is that i have insisted in the past that if i spot a kind of beefy lich it's going to end up being undead party pack usually it's true not always it's, it's not always true but in this case, this is exactly what happened. So there are some alternate strategies to this. Greg, I know, is a fan of white shirting the crap out of everybody. And that is something that we could potentially do because those uh, phantoms are obviously very punchy. But the problem with white shirting everybody is that you got to survive long enough to get the white shirt. Sometimes it works. Leggy won a seed on me once by doing exactly that. So we're not going to do anything for you but Thor Hammer fast should be fine here but the interesting thing about a fight like this with the alt final boss is that you just want to try and dump out as much damage as possible Ooh, it's a pretty good hit there you want to pump out as much damage as you can suddenly the power bonk and the mazamune are not nearly as important whereas other final bosses they become vitally important so this is where even an early dive like this to get some additional information is good but another important skill other than not antidoting other people with low hp is to know when to go and to know when to back off. If this doesn't work because RNG is bad, I know I need some more levels. So we're getting some not great rolls on Harm 4, but we don't have Fade. So Inferno's not very happy. We got a nuke off, so that's, that's a positive. We got Phantoms that are dying now. We got a second nuke off, so that might be a lot of Phantoms that are dying. Okay, not all the Phantoms made it. We lost our White Mage, that's okay. One more nuke should do this. There we go. We're in the clear. So there we go. Chaos Rush 2515. Not bad for a seed where I'm talking through everything and trying to guide you here. But if that didn't work, then I would have gotten some more levels. I might have gone for white shirt strats, but I saw that I got one of the phantoms down. Sometimes you're just going to get low rolls for your spells that you might not otherwise get. And you may see my time is a little bit over the normal splits or over my average, but that's not really my concern right now. My concern, especially if Thief is my only melee person, my only goal is to finish the run. If I finish first, great. If someone got better RNG and got through before me, whatever. I won, that's the most important thing. So thanks for the GG spells that. Um, so this is the end, this is the end of the story. And this is gonna be kind of the end of the guide as well. As I said before, I am very happy to uh, share any additional information you might have. 35 chests is a lot of chest open for Chaos Rush, by the way, but it got me two ribbons, so it was more than worth it. Um, but what Chaos Rush boils down to is that there is some luck involved. Like I said, sometimes someone's gonna get better RNG than me, but you have to put yourself in the positions to use the good luck that you get. So, like, it only took me two dives, and I knew my party was strong enough. I just needed better turn order on the nukes. So if I had gone back, I could have used a lot of time going to Melman, getting white shirts, checking guys, seeing what was there. But I knew I had the tools that I needed with Harm 4 and Double Nuke, and that was enough to get through. I possibly could have dived earlier, and someone may have been able to snipe the run from me by diving at, like, 21 and 22. But you saw I also needed all that HP on the... Uh, ninja that i had so that's going to be it for this guy this is asher this will be up on youtube as well asher games as i said before uh there is chaos rush tournament still going on round of eight is uh 
The second round of the round of debate is uh, April 3rd at 8 p.m. on Random Mania. Me personally, I'm already in the finals, so I just get to watch and uh, enjoy the show as best I can. But I'm going to be running some more Chaos Rush here in just a minute after I drink some water. But thanks, Bells Up and Greg, for popping in, giving some insight, giving some additional details, and fact-checking me, which is always important. If you're interested in Final Fantasy Randomizer, go check out the Discord. Everyone there is super helpful. This tournament is the first Final Fantasy Randomizer tournament I've done. It's been a very positive experience. Everyone's really trying to lift each other up. So it's a lot of fun, but that's it for now. Like I said, this is going to be a highlight uh, that I'll post on uh, Twitch and I'll throw it onto YouTube as well eventually. But that's it for now. This is Asher. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around. Take care.